Hey, hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, we are going to switch it up a bit. We've been doing a lot of Vue.js videos. We're going to do a React.js video. We're going to go all in. We're going to do a React.js video. We're going to use some Firebase and then we're going to use this uh, framework tool library. I always don't know what to call things like this, um, called the uh, React Query. And I'll just read what it says. Performant and powerful data synchronization for React. Fetch, cache, update your data in your React and React native applications without touching any global state. So what it does is it gives you kind of a standardized, standard way to interact with your data. Um, and we're gonna show you how to kind of use this React Query library. Um, because with React Query library, you could use your own persistence mechanism. And so what we're using is we're using a Firebase API to kind of um, read, write, and update photos in the photo gallery. Um, our starting point is the wonderful, your first Ionic app uh, that is documented on the Ionic framework um, website. What I've done is I've taken this application, which currently takes photos and saves the photos to local storage, and I've modified it so that it actually saves the store, uh, actually saves the photos in a Firebase database. Um, we've kind of structured it a little bit different. So we write a collection to Firebase that has the information about the file, but we actually stall, store the blob in Firebase storage. Um, all the source code will be available here. I'm just going to quickly, I'm going to focus primarily in this video on how you can use uh, React Query. Um, like I said, the source code is available. Uh, post some questions if a lot of people have uh, questions about it. I'll do another video and I'll do a deeper dive. But this is just really a quick overview of, um, of integrating React Query into an application. What I also found was that by integrating React Query, I didn't have to use a context API or anything like that. Um, React Query is able to manage the state for me. It can manage caching for me. I can invalidate the cache. I can control how long things are left in the cache. Um, a lot of a lot of cool things that you get out of the box that you, people are trying to find their own ways normally to kind of write themselves. So let's get to the code. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the application, it's basically um, you take a photo. This is the app running with capacitor, so it's deployed on a device. I was trying to get it to run on my normal phone, but my normal phone needed to get updated. Uh, but look, it looks like it actually has been updated. Let me see if in the back I can deploy this and before the end we can show it on device. But for now, this is a simulator. I can um, pick a photo from the device. It saves the photo. And then it gives it a list on the screen. I can click the detail page and get the detail image. And then I can uh, click on the image and delete it. Um, so that's the functionality of the app. Now let's kind of get to the code. And we're going to start with the first point part, which is listing the content that is um, in the application. So let's go to tab one in the source code. Like I said, the link to the source code will be provided. The link to the libraries and everything that I use will also be provided. So we'll just kind of walk from the top to the bottom and then start to kind of drill down. So um, the we'll start with the render view. So what we have in a render view is we have the title, obviously. Um, I've written this component to kind of encaps encapsulate rendering the error. So uh, basically what it does is it just draws a little box at the top of the screen if I get an error back. Um, I'm using the Ionic is loading component. Um, what you'll see is the hooks that I've created all return and is loading. And so what do we want to do if if um, if the regular query is loading, if when you're adding it's loading or if when you're deleting it's loading, I just render this loading um, dialog. You saw it uh, when the app first started up. I take the original grid that was in the application. I've just modified it to look for the fields um, based on a new uh, photo data structure. Um, so that's what that is. I've removed kind of the pop-up, not the pop-up, but the uh, the action sheet. So the action sheet doesn't appear anymore. You click it, it deletes. You know, the purpose of this video is to kind of to show you um, the utilization of React Query. Um, down here, I've added this button, which takes you to the detail page, and we'll talk about the detail page later. And then here's the the button to actually take the photo. So, but the first thing that happens when the application launches, we attempt to load all the data that needs to be rendered. And if you look, you'll see that here in the where is it? Da, 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 I'm in tab one, an image. We have this data map, and we basically loop through the content. So, where are we getting the data from? So, if we scroll back up here, we can take a look, and we will see my um where are my use statements 
we have this use photo hook right here. And this use photo hook, it basically returns um, some properties for us. It returns, if I'm loading, it will return the data when I got the data. And if I have an error, it will return the error. So let's go take a look what's happening inside of use photo. So inside of use photo is where we're gonna to start to see me using um, a React query. So um, first thing we get the uh, we get the we get the client from React Query. I'll talk to you a little bit later about what that does. But um, React Query provides this uh, function call for you called Use Query. And the first thing you do is you provide it a key. And so the key I'm providing for this query is called Photos. And so basically what that means is that um, React Query is going to keep track of my queries. It needs some sort of unique identifier so that it knows what query is associated with what. And so I've named this query Photos. And then the next step is you provide the function for basically how you want React Query to get the data. And so what I want React Query to do is I want it to call this API load photos function. And underneath all of this, like I said, I'm not going to deep dive into that, is basically a Firebase call to query Firebase and give me all the photos back. So now I have all the photos. Another um, trick that you can do, you don't have to do it, but what I've done is I've kind of preloaded or primed the, the query cache um, by, because um, remember we have the key. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm saying, I'm creating a new query and that query, um, the key is a combination of photos and the ID of the photo. So what this will do is that, which you'll see later when I go to the detail page, is that when I'm attempting to query a specific photo, i.e. based on its ID, I can combine this photos key along with this ID and it will retrieve the photo from the cache if it exists in the cache. One of the cool things that React Query does is what it will do is it will, um, it will pull the data from the cache first and then it will load the data from the database. So you don't get that delay that you normally see. Um, also, there's some configuration information, uh, a sort of configuration settings that you can provide, i.e. there's a stale value that you can set. And um, the stale value will control how long your data can sit in the query before it's updated. Right now it is set to zero. So it always queries the database to get your data. It just uses what's in the cache to immediately render it. But after it renders it on the screen, it will go update the cache with what's in the database and make the change if the change is necessary. So all I'm doing here is preloading it. But um, getting back, so the use query call, it takes the photos, it returns the photos. But the whole idea of um, using the React query and this use query call is that it's, it's pretty cool how it manages the, the error handling for me, it handles the whether or not it's loading and it returns the data for me all in a nice, neat, you know, package, um, along with the caching and all of the other things. And I, I haven't even touched on everything, but just this little bit of functionality um, just makes your life a lot easier. There's one consistent way to work with your data um, and it can manage the state of your data for you. So it's, you know, I, I I think you should check it out. I think it's pretty awesome. I've used it before and I'm, I'm actually I'm using it in an application I'm working on for a client right now. And so I thought it'd be great to just kind of share it with you. So that's so as you know, from your visual application, you use the uh, React uh, hooks from Ionic to get a photo. I get a photo. I'm selling this that I want you to give me a base 64 version of that. So my camera, my camera photo object comes back and it has a value called base 64 string. And what I'm doing here is I'm converting that base64 string into a blob. Um, I'm using a library called uh, base64 array buffer. Link is included, all the source codes available to you also. So now when I'm done here, I actually have a blob and I have a file name. And so the same way how I have the use photo hook, I have a um, add photo mutation hook. And we could take a look at what's going on there. Here at our use add photo. It's a mutation also, so we have this add photo mutation, we have the add error, and we have the add loading. And then when you're done with that, we can hop to the hook. And we can see in our hook, once again, we get the client, we execute our mutation, it's an asynchronous function to actually call to, act to save the photo to the database. Um, and then on success, we invalidate the query, so then the next time I load the page, I don't have to do anything, so I'll show you right now. When I take this photo, 
is loading and then you'll see because the query was invalidated when I call load photos it will reload all the data and will ensure I get the, ensure I get the newest data to display so that's how you do the use add photo and as I said um, all right so that's how you do the use add photo um, sorry I have a use delete photo hook and so the use delete photo hook has a uh, a property called a uh, delete mutation delete photo mutation that's the function that um, I actually have to call and just as up here on the use photos we get an error back and we get it is loading um, I'm here we're taking the is loading data and we're using that as the actual name for the property here um, inside of my tabs component but because I already have it up here I can't duplicate is loading data and error so what I've done is I just kind of named it differently so for my delete mutation my is loading is del loading del error and then as I said this is the uh, function that I need to call to actually execute the mutation so what you'll see is if I go down here um, when I actually want to do the mutation I call my function delete photo mutation and I pass it this object and the objects that are parameters that it needs it needs the ID of the photo and the path to where the photo is stored so let's hop over to my use delete hook um, you start to see a pattern here if you notice once again I'm getting access to the client and then we call the use mutation hook this is provided um, the use mutation hook is provided to us by react query similar to as loading we pass it a function that we wanted to execute and so the function that we wanted to execute is um, this is all typescript madness to kind of let you know that the first parameter is a string the second parameter is a path um, and then we call once again I have an API function to delete the photo that requires just an ID and a path once again the cool thing is that um, react query with its use mutation function handles all the error handling that is loading and handles all that stuff for you and then it has some functions that you can call some effects and one of the effects that I'm using here is unsuccessful run of this function I invalidate the query and so by invalidating the photos query that we discussed earlier what will happen is the next time that it needs to load it it will go back to Firebase and get all the new data for me so it, it will ensure that I have um, it will ensure that the deleted photo is removed from the result set so that's pretty cool what the what delete photo does uh, I think I jumped to delete photo from add photo my apologies um, so I just covered delete photo and I, I skipped from the add photo um, so let's hop back to the add photo the last piece that we need to cover here is um, this get the specific item with the when you go to the detail pages when you click on the button details we go to tab, tab one slash details and pass it the ID so now we route to the details page what the details page does is um, first it pulls the ID the photo ID off the URL as a parameter and then it calls our use photo hook and so what this does is it basically gets a photo using the ID that's passed in uh, similar to the other hooks that I've created it, it returns when it's loading so that's why you see the loading screen let's see if I can I think all these are cached so I'm not going to see it yeah it's happening too fast so we're not going to see this loading screen so we get the is loading screen and if it's loading then we render them please loading photos otherwise we come down here I'm using my display error hook. So if we got an error, let me start with my display error component. So if we get an error, it will display the error. And then we're using the data that came back from the query to kind of render this information be uh, below. First we get the image and then we get the specific fields that we want from uh, the Firebase uh, document. So now, I'll take, now let's take a look inside of use photo and see how it works. I mean, by this point, it shouldn't be a surprise what we're doing inside of there. We're using uh, remember you have to set a key for each one of your queries and so this going back to what we covered early my query key is the photos 
combined with a specific ID of the photo that I want to get access to. Um, and then I have a Firebase function that basically just loads a document based on the document ID and we pass the photo ID and it returns it. Um, there's no updating the cache or doing anything like that here. Uh, we're just going to take the document and return the document. So that kind of wraps it up. Like I said, I just want to do a quick overview of what this is. Let me just touch on a couple of other things to kind of set um, React Query up. So clearly you have to, um, where's the download link? Clearly you have to um, follow the getting started. Let's see the installation. So you need to import um, React Query. And then what you do inside of your application, I did it all the way in my index.tsx. So I've wrapped, I have wrapped um, my whole application with the uh, query client provider and I pass it to query client that needs to be used. And so that's how I get access to all the hooks from inside my functions. Looks like um, since I do have a React Query Dev Tools here, I might as well try to open up a browser and quickly kind of show you what's going on with that. So give me a second. I don't think, I think I'm just running the app there. So let me run the app. Yeah, let me run the app locally. I think I can uh, shut this thing down now. So let's close that. With that, let's quit Xcode. Okay. So now we have our app running. Some interesting things you'll notice is so down here we have um, the React Query tools that we installed here. So let's reload this and you can see what's happening here. All right, so you can see this photos is for the photos query that has been executed. Um, here's where it inserted in the cache, the all four of these documents with their IDs. Um, and then watch when I go to specific one. So it's basically saying this guy's stale. This is the uh, document that I went to. So I could actually see all the information about the queries that I've executed. Um, here's all the information about the actual data that came back from the query. Um, here's the cache time. So there's a whole bunch of additional information that you can get about what's going on with the query and the data that came back from the query. Um, we're on the specific detail page, and so I believe it's this ID that we're on. And so I can get the information about this specific item. You can see the query key is made up of the photos and the ID. Um, and this is, it's actually a pretty cool tool. You can use it kind of, uh, you can use it to see what's going on. Let's see, do a refresh. So it kind of up uploads the data, uh, reloads the data again. Um, that is kind of what this thing is doing here, React. Uh, query dev tools uh, like I said I just want to keep this a uh, short brief um, check out react query I think it's a pretty awesome tool a lot of other interesting stuff you can do it I this just kind of liter literally just scratching the service surface of the uh, functionality that's available uh, please check it out um, also once again thanks for stopping by checking out this video hopefully you found something interesting here um, you'll at least check out the source code, uh, share your thoughts, and um, come back again. Please leave comments if there's something else you'd like to see. Uh, thanks, and take care. Bye.